Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're going to be going over soccer practice bushcraft. So this is a subject that's very near and dear to my heart. I've been thinking about making this video for quite a while. My youngest is almost driving. So my oldest child's in college right now and I have been doing soccer practices and cross country practices and all different kinds of various sports and events for years and years and years. I think I'm going on around 16, 17 years of driving to practices and sitting at practices. And before we go any further with this, uh, I'm just gonna say, enjoy your kids' practices. They, they get out of this fairly quickly. So after watching a kid stretch and do warm up laps and do cool down laps and do repetitive exercises over and over again, I kind of know what part of the practices I need to watch, what parts I don't need to really watch. And this is some of the things I've been doing to pass the time at these practices that I go to time and time again. And I thought I would share this information and hopefully it helps you out as well. So if this is the kind of thing you like to see, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment in the comment box and ring the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Burning River Bushcraft. I also teach outdoor classes at OutdoorCore.com. So I'm going to set some parameters for soccer practice bushcrafting right away. So number one rule is don't embarrass your kids. Uh, your kids may love you when they're little, when they get old enough they don't really want anything to do with you hollering or anything that's going to really attract attention uh nothing flashy nothing that other kids are going to notice nothing that other parents are going to notice all these activities i'm going to do are just going to slide right by everyone unnoticed so one thing i'm always going to have with me is going to be some type of reading material it's a great way to do something besides just play on your phone uh, the phones are great uh, i've learned a ton of stuff watching videos uh, hopefully you watch all my videos but books are books are different books are something you can read and go back to at various times so this is just going to be general bushcraft knowledge this is general outdoors knowledge in this category so i've got uh, this is lighting grandma's fires this is best of backwoodsman i've got the gospel survival as well as well as primitive bows and arrows so I've always got a book with me usually two in a couple different subjects so when you're looking at these books at a practice like this you can stop reread sections take notes go back into uh, parts that you maybe had skimmed and need to go over better so I always have a book of some type and you probably should as well so another thing that occupies my time at children's practices is botany uh, it's a huge thing for any type of survival bushcraft. These uh, medicinal plants and wild edible plants, these two copies go with me nearly all the time. I always carry both of them at once. It lets me cross-reference from one to the other. I've got a ton of books on this subject. Uh, Botany of Day is another good one. Uh, when the weather's so-so, or if I'm not at a setting like this, more of a mode field, I will just get out and go for a walk, and I'll get a... A flower or a weed or something that I'm not personally familiar with and I will bring that in and I'll start cross-referencing then I'll press it and I'll take it home kind of study that one a little bit botany is a huge one and it's a pretty easy one nearly any field of any sporting event that I've gone to for practices or for games for that matter if you're at a, a larger tournament I can walk around and I can ID all kinds of different wild edibles and wild medicinal plants so I started doing this when the kids were really little. So I've had a box similar to this in my vehicle when I'm going to practices. This is just something I grab and throw in there. And it has several different things in it depending on what I'm doing. But one thing it usually has in it is leather work. So something I frequently work on is leather work. Now I am not a skilled leather worker at all. But for just, just basic knife sheets, this is what I'm working on. This is not finished yet. But... I have just the side of leather. I can cut stuff out if I am sitting in a uh, in the chair as opposed to having a picnic table like I do right now. Uh, I can sew at least. So even if I'm sitting in my own car, I can bring something, you know, in this stage. Or I've got other other items cut out. Here's a sheet I'm working on right here. 
So in this case, I can take a, a cutout sheet that's already got the holes punched and I can just sew this up. And I just bought a Tandy leather starter kit a long time ago. It's been maybe eight years ago I've had it. I don't think I've upgraded anything. I've gone through different styles and different types of needles, of course, but the basic gear is pretty minimal. So probably the fourth thing that I work on when I am at a practice like this is going to be wood carving. I have a course on outdoor core. Uh, carving wooden paddles is something I do, and that's something I didn't bring with me. That just too much, too labor intensive. You don't want to have any axes. This is all just real low key type things. Uh, I also have a course on outdoor core on carving fishing lures. Most of the fishing lures I carve are at a practice itself. And just a simple pocket knife like this is not going to draw any attention. The, this is a flex cut carving jack. So if you're not familiar with this, this has a bunch of different carving tools on it. So I can carve spoons. Uh, it works a little better than having a whole tool kit with me. So this is something that's pretty frequented by me and I just carry a leather strap. So something like this and a blank and I'm off and I'm good to go. Another word on carving is in this particular case, um, I just can't break off a tree branch and start whittling. So green woodworking doesn't work as well for what I'm doing. Uh, you, the park rangers are not gonna like that at all. So these pre-sawn blanks, this one is actually out of the last Apaka box. And this is a piece of green cherry um, green meaning fresh. So this is a fresh, fresh cut piece of cherry that I brought with me. So I axed this out real quick, just gave it a kind of profile enough where I can do the rest of this by hand. And this obviously isn't something that I just went and grabbed out of the woods. This has got, you know, heavy duty ax marks. This came from an actual log. So when you see this, or when you see me working on a, a blank that was sawed out, or when I work with some of my fishing lures, I'll use basswood carving blocks. So if you're not into carving, that's fine. Uh, just a simple pocket knife, and I have been known to grab a dead stick or two over the years, and I will just make a tri-stick. So that's another thing to practice all my notches. I've made tri-stick after tri-stick. I've also made primitive traps. Uh, again, I'm whittling on a stick. Nobody knows what I'm doing. It's all good, and I'm fairly unnoticeable, and I'm working on my knife skills at the same time. Another skill I like to work on while I'm at a soccer practice or any type of kids practice is tracking. Uh, if you're in a straight up grassy soccer field, this doesn't work as well, but I'm always on the outside edges. So either I'm looking for wild edibles or I'm looking for signs of animals. In this particular area, uh, there's some mud and stuff behind me. There's a creek running back here and this is a great area for tracking. So if I don't have my, my wild edibles with me, then I've probably got my tracking books with me. So this is something that you kind of do naturally as a hunter. I took uh, the art of tracking uh, course on Outdoor Core and it kind of opened up. I never really paid attention to anything that wasn't a mammal that I could shoot. So especially if you want to look into micro tracking and you start looking at small tracks and trying to see a continuation of tracks, uh, this is a great spot to work on it. You can literally track an animal across six feet and it could take you a half hour. So it's a great skill to work on. Uh, it's a great consumer of time and you're definitely uh, gonna end up a better hunter or a better trapper spending time tracking animals. Uh, the last one is something that definitely helps me out the most and that is rucking. Uh, this is my Go Ruck Rucker and there's not much in here right now. You can see it's a pretty flat bag but I do have a weight plate in here. So I've got some survival gear in the front here just in case something happens while I'm out rucking. But this is a solid, solid bag. I've got a weight plate inside of here. So you don't need a go ruck bag for this and you don't need anything too particular, uh, but it kind of sucks to not have it. This thing sits in here nice and high. Uh, the weight doesn't shift around in here. They sell these plates, I made one, and it fits in here like a glove. So uh, 
when I'm doing this in an hour's time, I can get, you know, close to four miles in. And again, it just looks like I'm out exercising. There's a lot of people walk while this is going on. Uh, I'm walking with weight on, so that's helping me. That's helping me during, during hunting season. That's helping me any type of survival classes I'm either taking or teaching. Uh, this is definitely a way to go. So if I'm just walking for pace and I'm trying to get as many miles in as possible in a one hour practice, or if I'm looking for plants and looking for tracks, chances are I've got a dirty black go ruck bag on my back with a weight in there. It's just kind of how I roll. And you can multitask with this as well. You see right here, I've got a set of pace beads that I keep tucked in here. Uh, so while I'm doing that, I'm keeping my pace. Uh, I've got a tracker on my phone, so it says how many miles I'm going. So as I get to my last pace bead and slide it down, within a step or two, my phone will go off and tell me exactly how many, uh, how many meters I've walked. So this is a great thing to do. It uh, definitely, definitely has helped me out uh, physically. It's helped me get through courses that were tough and uh, it's kind of a no-brainer. It keeps you in shape with very, very minimal input. So definitely, as I mentioned before, enjoy your kids' sports, but you don't need to see them do jumping jacks from the time they're four to the time they're 18. So enjoy yourself while you're out here and go ahead and work on some skills. A simple box like this, a couple books, you know, my backpack with some weight in there, and man, I could spend hours outside and I'm getting myself better each and every time. There are things that I've done that's not included here. Uh, I usually have some paracord yeah so i've got paracord with me as well uh, so i'm working on knots it's i'm just my mind works like this so i'm always trying to stay busy doing something i've done bigger things i've tried to work on net making and that's just too much it's too much setup it uh people come by and i've got a net strung across trees it's just not low-key enough for me now one thing that i really haven't got to do because it wasn't available uh, when my kids were at the, the prime of their sports is the outdoor core. I mention that all the time. There's some great instructors there. So I have taken carving classes online in the past and I've taken botany classes through Herbal Academy. So I'm into a structured education. I believe in that. So any of the outdoor core classes I've taken, uh, it's great. They don't always translate well to doing the stuff during a child's practice. But if you've got a phone or a tablet or your laptop all charged up, you can watch those courses. Uh, I would definitely suggest it. But use your time wisely, enjoy your kids, but it's your time too. So you can educate yourself and get better at skills while your kids are getting better at their skills. Till next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon.